Hey, welcome back. This week, I'm going to walk you through a quick and easy technique for animating over video. If you're following me from Skillshare, you know that I love bringing photos to life with animation. It's a great way to incorporate my quirkiness into mundane images, and with Procreate Dreams, we can now animate directly on video. So let's get started. For my file setup, I'm going to be using 4K widescreen, which matches my video size I'll be bringing in and I'll use 12 frames per second which mimic drawing every two frames for 24 frames per second which is how traditional animation is done and then for the duration of the video I will start out with 15 seconds. Now I'm going to tap the plus icon here to add a video and then I will select the video that I want to use. And with the recent Dreams update, working with 4K video should work really smoothly now. But if you are still having issues or crashing, you can tap on options down here and switch format to most compatible. This will adjust the format to work better in Procreate. So if you're on an older iPad or a less powerful iPad, you may want to try this tip to like improve your experience working with the video. And now with the video imported, I'm I'm going to add two new tracks above it. Sketching an animation guide. Before we dive into animation, let's take a moment to break it down. I'm planning on having the animation enter the frame in organic liquid motion, the record, and wiggle a little before expanding out to fill the entire frame. Since I'll be using straight ahead animation approach, I'm going to create an animation guide to plan out the initial movement of the animation. In the top track, I'm going to enter the drawing mode and choose a color that will stand out but will be different from my final animation color. My plan is to have my animation come into the frame from different directions and fill up the record. Once my motion paths are drawn, I will go in and create tick marks to determine the timing and spacing of the animation. So basically how this will work is the areas of the line with tick marks closer will move slower while the areas that have larger gaps will have the animation move the fastest. Lastly, I will lower the opacity of my sketch to make it easier to see my animation and then I will use the fill duration to extend the frame fully. Animating the first part. First, I will walk you through the first part of the animation with the flying liquid blobs and the spinning record animation. Now I'm going to tap on the middle empty track and go into flipbook mode. For the animation, I'm using the studio pen and the light cyan color. Feel free to use your favorite brush and color. And in the first empty frame, I'm going to draw from the edge of the frame to around my first tick mark for all of the lines. And in the next frame, I will redraw my blue lines, extend it to the second tick mark. Beginning with the third frame, I'm going to start tapering my blue shapes as I draw them. For the fourth frame, my shapes hit the record and will begin filling it up. Since the record is rotating, I want my blue blobs to also rotate as they start to fill up the record. I will draw them moving to the right. And to help me with drawing, I'm going to reduce the number of previous onion skins shown to one. And I will turn off the animation guide now that the initial animation is over. In the next frame, I'm just tapering the end of the blobs and drawing them larger and expanding further to the right. In the next frame, I'm going to start showing the blobs expanding and merging with each other. So we'll draw these two together. And to add some dimension to my animation, I'm going to erase around the stylus and tone arm so it looks like my animation is sitting under them. To help me with this, I will lower the opacity of the layer and then bring the opacity back up once done and then redraw these to merge together. And for the last blob, I'm going to just expand its shape, but keep it solo for now. In the next frame, all the blobs will be connected. So I'm going to draw the interior of the shape first, and then draw the edge of the record and use color drop to fill it in. And again, I will erase around the tone arm. And then in the next frame, I will have the record fully covered. So I'm going to just draw around the interior circle of the record and then the exterior edge. 
and I will use the color drop to fill in the record. And once again, I will erase around the tone arm of the record. Next, I'm going to redraw the previous frame. This will give the animation some wiggle as you will see the subtle differences of the frames, which will make it look like it's rotating around and moving. Once done, I will go back to the timeline and group these last two frames and I will duplicate those several times. And to speed this up, I'm going to group all of these groups and duplicate that three times. So now my spinning record animation is about four seconds long. Now that we have the initial animation, I'm going to walk you through how I create this animation transition where the blue splats out to fill the screen. To start out, I'm going to tap on an empty track above my animation. If you don't have an empty track, just tap on the plus icon and click track. And I'm going to position the playhead around the four second mark and we'll open up the flipbook mode again. And in this frame, I'm going to draw a wiggly circle inside of the record interior circle. And then I'm going to draw a wiggly line around the outside of the record. And as previously, I will use the color drop to fill in. In the next frame, I'll draw a small wiggly circle inside of the previous shape. And this time, I'm going to draw the wiggle a lot bolder and larger. In the next frame, I'm going to just draw the exterior wiggly line and fill it in. Then I'll go to the next frame and this time I'm just going to draw some wiggly lines around the corners of the frame and color drop to fill in. And in the last frame I'll just color drop to fill the entire frame with my color. Next I'll return to the timeline and zoom out a little so I can drag the last frame to 5 seconds mark. And since I don't need the lower animation to go as far, I'll reduce the last group. Now that my animation is set up, I'm going to tweak some of the settings by tapping on the project title here and tapping on timeline and clicking on loop so that this way when I play back the animation, it will constantly loop instead of just playing once. Next, I'll adjust the final duration by tapping on properties here and clicking the timing here. I'll update it to six seconds so I'll have some time of the video playing without any animation and now I'll tap the screen with four fingers to play back the animation in full screen mode and that's it. To recap, I just walked you through my process for planning out and creating animation over video in Procreate Dreams. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick animation tutorial. Feel free to share in the comments below what types of projects you're working on in Procreate Dreams and what topics you would be interested in learning about. See you later.